Well, I think in general, I think, you know, I particularly know that in life, you know, I, I tend to read more and learn more as I got older than yeah. when I was at school. But I, I think a lot of people still may find the fact that, OK, I'm in my mid 30s or in my late 40s, you know, that's it. I'm done. And I just think that part of what we try to do is to is to create content and awareness uh, and share yeah. expertise because life is a continual journey of education and, and continual learning and development. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, the best, uh, well, my view on education is is that, you know, it is an ongoing process. And I think that sometimes people can be turned off by the word education and it reminds them of school or it reminds them of university. But the reality is it's, it's a lifelong learning. And wherever you get that education, be it from, you know, from, from reading a book, being from reading the FT, be it from, you know, visiting your website every week, wherever somebody gets that education, as long as it suits them and as long as that's what speaks to them, then that's that's all that matters. There's no point going sitting in a library trying to study books if that's not your thing because it's just you're going to end up hating doing it. But you do have to, and I think particularly, I mean, it, it, certainly in business, it's such a dynamic beast because business, by definition, it's a marketplace. And so whether you go back to the old Roman times where you've got one little marketplace in a street and people people bartering or trading, or whether you've got, you know, a, a country of 62 million people or, or, or a, country, a world of 7 billion people all trading, it's the same thing. So it's a marketplace. So it's therefore going to be responsive to and, and a function of the, the activities in that marketplace on a daily basis, the emotions, the transactions, what's happening, and, you know, the, the, the innovations, the new technology, and so on. So, I mean, if you... I mean, I often wonder if somebody that made their fortune, someone like Rockefeller that made their fortune in another era, would they be able to make their fortune today? I would actually tend to say no if they followed the same principles, but somebody like that would probably have the knowledge to adapt, because to, 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 which is basically about learning. You see people that you know have, have had illnesses coming back and starting new businesses, people who have had corporate failures, people who have been to jail, paid their dues, reinvented themselves. You know, like Michael Milken in the U.S., for example, who've come come back and 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 reinvented themselves as you know once again strong business people. So these are people who had a gap out of their lives and who then still, for whatever reason, came back and reinvented and became successful again in business. So in general, that comes from from learning, from education, from being exposed to what's in the marketplace. In the old days, in the Roman times, it would be from standing there just, just chatting and shooting the breeze with with the other people, you know, out on the cobbles. But these days, it's from, from um, you know, getting information from other places. I think as well, in my view, certainly in the last decade, there's been a shift towards people understanding uh, the more qualitative side of life, uh, but certainly the more qualitative side of business. And by that, I mean people are more open to to psychology, they're more open to spirituality, they're more open to, you know, to understanding um, that that life, you know, is not necessarily just two-dimensional. And I think so, they're understanding that there's other ways that they can get information and improve themselves and improve their own psychology and improve their own well-being uh, through, through learning. 